about Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we're going to dye some yarn inspired by a new inspiration photo. And by coincidence, apparently today is National Ice Cream Day, which I did not know when I scheduled the stream for today or when I picked a uh, mint chocolate chip ice cream as the inspiration for the July 2022 Chemnitz Dye Along live stream. Let me check that the audio is working. Yay. Yes, the audio is in fact working. Oh my goodness, I was dealing with a lot of tech stuff. But anyway, every month I like to pick a new inspiration photo and then I'll dye some yarn inspired by that photo in a live stream, but it's a dye along. So I invite all of you to dye some yarn inspired by the same photo as well. And then if you share your photos with me in a couple different ways, then I will include as many as I can in the recap uh, that I'll share in about a month where I will show the finished dry yarn that I created in this video and then also showcase some of your yarn. Now, I know mint chocolate chip is not everyone's favorite flavor. So this month, if you're more than welcome to dye your yarn based on my favorite flavor, but you can also pick your favorite flavor. Just when you're submitting the picture of your yarn, also submit a picture of the ice cream that you picked. Because uh, I'm curious uh, if you want to go with this palette or if you want to go with, you know, a different flavor of ice cream, that is fine. But the way that you can submit pictures for the recap is by sharing your pictures of your yarn on Instagram with, with the hashtag Chemnitz Dialong. Just if it's not ice cream, like mint chocolate chip looking, it's again other ice cream. Just like say it's ice cream in the comments so that way I know. <laughs> Otherwise I might think it was a previous month that you're, you're dying from. Uh, or you can look for this photo on the Chemnitz Facebook page. I do have that linked down in the video description and it is very likely the pinned post on my Facebook page. And so those are, and you just comment on that with a photo comment. So those are the two ways to submit pictures. Any dialogue projects that you share in my Facebook group are kept private because we have a no sharing policy from that group. So I would never share anything without explicit permission from there. So use like Instagram or the public Facebook page to sub, um, submit. Oh, and so that's all the intro and like, I'm everything it like, for some reason, it almost feels like I have like a muted filter, like the contrast. I don't think it's just the contrast issue. Cause if I up the contrast more, I've been having camera issues today. Is there a filter on it? Uh, no, that's not what I want. I was like, oh wait, is there a filter I could put on it that would fix it? Because when I go and fix the, this is the camera I'm using as a face cam right now. It's kind of the cursed one. Um, see, I don't think that makes it. Oh, maybe then I can reduce the saturation a little bit. Maybe that's a little better. Mm, still doesn't look much better. It's still looking very like fake or something, but the camera I usually use as a face cam just didn't want to film any video for me today. So we're going with this one <laughs> as like fake as I'm feeling here. Thankfully the other camera that I'm going to be filming for the yarn dyeing is better. Maybe I should See then if I have the saturation normal, it'll just make me like mega pink. Maybe I just am mega pink today. <laughs> I don't know. But my hair, my hair is is way more red than this. It's not looking red. Um, hello, hello everyone. Okay. Um, yes, so today I am sort of working on a little bit of some borrowed time uh, because my children are upstairs and they're being very quiet for now, but that may not last forever. And so, and I am the only adult here right now, so we'll see how this goes, how this goes. Um, I want to make a good chocolate dye. See, that's what I don't know because I recently used chocolate brown and it was very red. Pecan, 
maybe the best one for the chocolate, but I'm going to play with two greens and two blues, like a mint and a chocolate co named colors and some other stuff. But I don't even have that on the counter. Uh, so yeah, and let's uh, fix this because the lighting changed as well. This is what happens when I am managing everything. Okay. Cool. It has been a while. <laughs> I'm getting back into the swing of things. All right, but let's look at the colors that I have first because that's what we're going to do. But since I have my kids on both iPads, I don't have a monitor, so I can't see chat. I guess there's technically a few different browns I could use. Okay, and I am going to Oh yeah, and this one also went weird with the zoom. Nope, wrong camera. All right. <laughs> okay, so I don't even know if I can read these from down here, but I have pulled um, some Dharma acid dyes. I have Spearmint Breeze, uh, which is a little bit more blue than the color of the ice cream in the picture I picked, but mint chocolate chip ice cream can vary in color depending on how much food coloring has been added. I also grabbed pistachio because it's not quite blue enough, but that is another color that could evoke that minty feel. And then for browns, I pulled teddy bear brown, chocolate brown, which is the one in the middle and is more red, but I haven't tried speckling with that before. So I don't know how like good of a brown it would be. And then I have pecan brown, which would probably be totally fine. Um, as a brown, but uh, yeah, so those are the colors. And then I have some Knit Picks Stroll fingering weight yarn, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And then I also have, here we go. Um, so I have Stroll and I also have Swish DK, which is 100% superwash merino. All of the yarn has been pre soaking for a while couple of hours probably, um, but I haven't added any acid yet. Uh, that's something that I still need to do. So sage green, mm. so the color sage leaf um, can oftentimes be quite blue and brown. Um, it's a very tricky color to use and so because it like breaks a lot and so that's probably the main reason why I wouldn't go for it. Spearmint Breeze is going to be very bright. And so, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so the pecan brown, I think, is the probably the most true to the depth of, like, almost black of chocolate chips. But if I want the speckles that I do, sorry, I keep kicking the thing. Um, if I want the speckles to read a little bit more brown and feel more brown, then I may want to go for one that isn't quite as dark so I can feel the brown a little bit more, but I don't want it to feel red. Um, so we'll do like a colorway where we'll play with maybe not all four, but we'll play with a bunch of the colors and then see, and then decide from there. Um, but yeah, let's get set up. Now we are going to be using dry powders today. So once I start opening these dye jars, I will be wearing a respirator mask safety glasses and gloves. All of the tools and equipment I am using are dedicated for dyeing yarn and aren't ever used for the preparation of food. Um, yeah, so once I put the mask on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be more muffled. <laughs> uh, my voice will be more muffled. And yeah, even though my voice is still like feeling a little bit, a little bit strained. But once we get to like, if we get a waiting step at some point, then I can give some like life update. Kind of things. Okay, but I'm realizing, am I gonna be able to turn this so I can maybe see the chat? I don't think I'm gonna be able to read the chat. <laughs> oh, 
Oh man, the things like, the things I didn't consider when I gave my kids the iPads. All right. I don't, so I have the yarn soaking in a five gallon bucket and I don't want to add acid to there because I probably have to add way too much. But I should also get a steamer basket going. We have that ready. do some kind and I'm not sure exactly of all over minty something and then I'm gonna want to do some chocolate speckles that's sort of my feeling it's as I said it's my favorite ice cream flavor and so I had to do it okay got a basin I have dyed yarn, well on Friday was the first time I've dyed yarn in like a month. And I'm like, I don't know where anything is anymore. <laughs> Like my two liter, like everything is so neatly put away, which means I know where nothing is. Like my two liter jars. Okay, so in here, we're gonna add a good old glug of white vinegar. Two liters of water. of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn that as I mentioned was already pre-soaked. So I am really just pressing this through. It's not gonna need to be in the acid very long to have enough acid in here to help the colors strike. Um, but I'm gonna set this aside and just give it like a minute or two. And let's see, so of those, of that yarn, Two of the skeins, we're gonna do sort of like a sort of more abstract version of this. We're gonna have the green and the brown in there. It might be a little bit more equal. Um, and then we're also gonna start using a yarn mop for the countertop and to wipe off my gloved fingertips. Um, and actually, I'll just grab that skein right now. not get water everywhere. So whenever you're speckling yarn, you want your fingertips to be as dry as possible because you don't want the dye to really stick to your gloved hands. But some will still stick. And rather than rinsing it off and putting it down the drain or something, you can get sort of fun, abstract, non-repeating colorways when you wipe those gloved fingers onto here. And then I will also use this later to wipe any dye off of my counter. This is a shower curtain, an Ikea shower curtain, that I like to use for that purpose. Um, what else do I need? Okay, I'm gonna peek at chat and see what you guys have to say. Both types of dye, let's see. You like espresso bean. Espresso bean is very purple. Very, very purple. Um, wait, let's see. Um, so Poppy Lady, you're work looking to dye some cotton at some point because you can't use wool. Um, these powders are um, acid dyes, and so they will not work on cotton or other plant-based fibers. 
For plant-based fibers, um, check out Dharma's Procyon Fiber Reactive dyes. Those plus some soda ash will work great on cotton yarn and cotton fibers. I also have some paper towels. So even though I'm a yarn mop, I'm still going to want to dry off my gloves because my gloves will be damp once I've touched this mop. And so I have some paper towels to then dry before I go back into a powder container. I'm going to get our yarn that we're going to be dyeing out. And then we'll decide if we want to do a total, if we want to layer on powders and do something more abstract for the mint color. And so I squeezed out a lot of the liquid here. And I actually have a video coming up and I'll move the inspiration photo on the computer so it's not blocking. And actually, I'm gonna rotate these like this anyway. I do have a video coming out for Chemnitz patrons where I am gonna be looking at, um, for when I'm speckling, having wet versus more damp versus more saturated yarn. And so that's something that I haven't found the conclusions for yet. Nope, that is not what I wanted to move. That's why. Okay, I'm gonna make it a little bigger so maybe I can see it. Um, yay, for binge watching Chemnitz videos. Oh yeah, guys, subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put my respirator on now and get some gloves and we'll get going. <sighs> now, if I remember correctly, when I speak in a more normal tone of voice, it doesn't reverberate quite as badly. Uh, when I try to project more while wearing this, then it's a little harder. Okay, but let's start with some spearmint breeze. I think that this color has some like fluorescent lemon in it. It is a beautiful, beautiful color, but <laughs> it's not quite, um, it may be too bright for what I am hoping to evoke. And I haven't played around with it with a lot of different depths of shade to really know how it works. But you can kind of see, I'll have to zoom in for you. But then this, the yarn mop will give a good sense. You can see the brightness there. It's the right hue. It's just I would need it at a very light depth of shade to get what I'm going for, I think. Which may be a reason why using the powder may not be what we want. Okay, pistachio. Which I'm, I think I'm going a little heavier with. I love how when I started this, I was like, oh, I'm totally not going to go in straight lines. I'll layer things differently, especially once we flip it. Actually, I may take not just wet my fingertips. I might take a little bit and put it over here. All right. It's going to look, it's looking very, very yellow at first. But I really do think that this swatch here is a very good representation for what the color ends up being after it's been heat set. So like putting a little bit on right now looks super, super like yellow green. Um, and it ends up, I have a picture, maybe I'll pull it in a moment from my website. But the Spearmint Breeze color probably is the one I do wanna use 
but I figured I'd bring that other one in. All right, now I think this is pecan brown. I think that this one will likely be the winner. Pecan brown is one of my favorite browns in the whole world. It is a very true brown. It is a true brown speckle. It doesn't feel pink. It doesn't feel purple. It doesn't feel red. It is just a brown. It is a very cool toned brown. And so what's funny is I don't think my eyes will show up well on camera, but my eyes are like melted chocolate brown with some red in there. So we'll see what chocolate brown looks like as speckles. Because the technique I did with it previously was not speckles. And so therefore, yeah, it's looking very pink to me. Um, I'll have to post a picture of this maybe um, somewhere else, but it reminds me, even though it's not quite the same, it 100% reminds me of Jacquard chestnut, I believe. Like espresso bean is very, very purple. And this one isn't, so... All right, and Teddy Bear Brown is another color I've not used very much at all. It does look like it's potentially warmer than the pecan. You know, that could be the winner, the Teddy Bear. I'm gonna have to like get over here to like wipe a little bit more off my gloves. I'll try to get a photo of this. Let me and then I'll come and sit down. I wanna give all this yarn hair like a good five minutes just to let everything sort of sink in before I try moving it. And I'm going to take some pictures. Um, do, 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 do. It's funny, the pistachio I haven't tried speckling with, it definitely is giving me a like more natural kind of mint color. I'm trying for the recap to get just some pictures to remember to put it in. Speckling-wise, they're looking very similar, but that's why if once they get a little bit of a chance, it's all wet now, to spread a little bit, that'll be a little easier, I think, to determine. But I didn't set a timer. Let me see. Do, do, do. As I come over, um, here in the UK. Okay, let me let me see if I can share. Um, on Instagram, I'm just Chemnitz, and so I'm gonna see if I can label one of these with the the browns
So I just shared the picture to my stories, which of course will get uploaded. It'll be a while before I can tell them that to like share what I just edited on my photo here. Oh, but while we're waiting, oh my goodness, the last like month has been not as gone according to plan. Um, we were hitting the end of the school year and I am not in focus. Okay, tennis ball. Let's, let's, um, so this camera is named tennis ball because I have a sticker on it. Um, okay, I can do manual focus. Uh, it has a sticker on it, so that's like just why it's called tennis ball. But the kids' school year was ending, and we were supposed to go to the UK. And we were going to go spend a week, um, like, in the countryside, and then, like, do touristy things with the kids in London. Instead, <laughs> instead, we ended up in quarantine, and... Yay, recovery! I'm fine now. Um, <laughs> um, we're all fine now. It was just hard. <laughs> it was hard. And I mean, I've been like fully recovered for a couple of weeks now, but it was just stressful and frustrating that like the first trip we had booked uh, in two and a half years, we had to cancel. And so I avoided getting sick for a very long time. And then we got sick. <laughs> um, yeah, and like Keith and I were both pretty sick. Um, not like dangerously so, but the sickest we've been in as long as we can remember. Like just wanted to be in bed level. And so that was fun parenting. <laughs> um, um, am I able to read book? Yes. Uh, we don't know when though. It may not be until next summer. Um, and we also don't know if flights are going to be insanely more expensive because of gas prices. So that's another thing. But we did book tickets that were reschedulable. So we have a credit with the airline that we can rebook with. Um, and so fingers crossed. Now the positive <laughs> of all this positive stuff um, is that we had some friends who moved like out to Massachusetts for about a month, which was amazing. They stayed with us for a week and we got sick a couple days. So we were all exposed together. They didn't get sick. By happenstance, because we were supposed to go to the UK, they went to an Airbnb near some other friends for a couple weeks. And so they ended up not being sick. They ended up staying somewhere else, happenstance, while we were sick. And um, then by the time like we were all better was when they were supposed to come back and move back in with us. So that still happened according to plan. So we had a little over two weeks of our best friends and their two kids living here. Um, and I mean, they were spaced out, but that was the plan originally anyway. And our kids all went to like a week of camp together. And it's just, they're our best friends in the whole world. And it's just like, well, we have other like really good friends too. Uh, not that any of them are watching right now, but I was like, not to discount our other best friends as well. But um, it's just such a treasure because they live in California and the last trip that we had done was in February 2020 to go see them. So, um, yeah, well, one, one kid was completely fine. Um, I'll, I'll go turn off the timer and put my mask back on. Oh, man, the... Ooh, that's a lot of water on my floor. I'll clean that later. Mm. You know, I showed on in Instagram, chocolate brown is so red, and there are absolutely red speckles with it. We'll see what it does when I flip and stuff, because I actually may like that the best. So we may try that. Um, so yeah, one kid was, um, negative the entire time. Um, and that's unfortunately the same kid who had been sick 
earlier this year, so he ended up in isolation <laughs> in like isolation again, so we could keep him healthy. Um, with like iPad and like Zoom and like he was had plenty of books, so he was fine. But the other kid was completely asymptomatic and slept with me and took care of like me and <laughs> Keith. Oh goodness. Okay, I did. What ended up flipping this? I'm gonna go like that. Now, one of flipping yarn that I speckled in general, I do try to like lift and move more than I try to um, rub if I don't want the speckles to spread out. Um, but yeah, I think let's keep these browns in approximately the same space. We can do something different with the greens. But the other reason why I have it like sort of scrunched is that um, by having it a little bit scrunched, it means I can hit more layers that are down below. And now with this, I'll probably steam set this in a minute. I think the pistachio, like, it's a great pistachio green, but it is not brown enough for what I want, or brown enough, blue enough for what I want. So I think that Spearmint Breeze is going to be our winner. Um, I'm playing with the pecan. I'm spreading things like a little more than I had before. You know, I'm thinking about the order of operations today. And it's always a question of like, do you want to do like all over color first or speckles first? And normally I like to do the all over color first, so then I can kind of decide where I want the speckles to go. But, well, I guess the steamer basket will be full, so I'm just not sure what I want to do today. This one's going a little heavier. That's okay. Oh, this is the chocolate one now. Oh, right, because I flipped them. It's definitely the warmest, which, like, the green may cancel out some of that, like, warmth. So, I do want to see how it, like, steam sets at least a bit. But let's get the greens. We may not need, I should probably set up another steamer basket. I'm not really going for fine speckles, but I'm going a bit heavier with this um, pistachio because I know it is a premixed pastel. And why not? The goal here was for me to start to get a feel of what colors I wanted to use and I feel like I've accomplished that. Plus, we're going to have like a more abstract kind of colorway here as well. Which is all good. And now I need my experiment. Yeah, because if I was doing the liquid bait technique, the chocolate brown, those pink specks in there would bother me more. But I actually don't entirely mind. Believe it or not, this is not where I thought I was going to go with this colorway. I really like it, though. Um... I'm spreading this color out a little bit more this time and again it's able to go down a few layers which is nice oh 
indie bark. And he's crated in the other room. It's like the things I do normally, like if the kids were up, I would have been like, hey guys, okay, I'm gonna use food coloring today. But I did take Lucas out and we played Pokemon Go for an hour or so today already. And so hopefully that's giving me some good luck. Okay, one of the browns is definitely like sticking on the bottom there. All right, the yarn I'm going to pop into my steamer basket for just a couple of minutes. Um, oh, I love seeing the Indie Love emote. Oh my goodness. That makes me so happy. Okay. I am going to wash these gloves, set them aside because they're so sweaty now. But since the gloves aren't like done, I have a pan where gloves that I've rinsed off but are too wet on the inside for me to put them back on my hands right now. I have a spot where I set them and then I have like a bunch of sets that I will work through today and then tomorrow or whenever the next time I die is. Whew. It is hot today though. Um, I need to make another steamer basket. Do, 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 do. Probably clean up that water on the ground. So the yarn mop that we started. We will keep using for all of our projects today. Okay, what is today? No, I guess I need some respirator mask on Friday too. I was a little unsure how I'd feel about trying to talk through it, but so far so good. Um, yeah, so the, the, the teddy bear is that's slightly warmer than pecan um, in person, but the chocolate is like pink. Um, let's see. Oh, goodness. Well, I hope, yeah, no, no one needed to go to the hospital or anything close. Um, and I guess like for transparency, like I, because I have some like risk factors, I took the I was on Paxlovid, which meant that, so it was funny because like my symptoms and my husband's symptoms were very, very similar, but then I like got like all the way better faster. Um, and so, but otherwise like symptoms wise, we really mirrored each other. So it was just in, as scientists, I was like, oh, this is a little bit interesting. Um, but yeah, it's just like, We've made it so long and yeah, but ironically the, the, the kid who was negative this whole time, who knocking on wood was completely healthy, uh, <laughs> there were elements of it that he really likes because it meant that he got meals in his room and he could eat when he wanted, he could go to sleep when he wanted, he has like some elements of control. I just controlled okay, no, you have to charge the iPad in the hallway now <laughs> and that kinds of stuff. But, um, yeah, so that was, that was interesting, but yeah, that was, I mean, I'm feeling like almost to my baseline, but then of course I had, because we had friends here and was hosting and hadn't even really processed the, like having to cancel our trip and all of that, because we spent all that time that we should have been on our trip being sick. <laughs> And then it's like I had like I'm, at the beginning of this week when our friends left, I had a major fatigue flare up that was like one of the worst that I've had in years. And I'm like, the kids were in camp and I'm like, I should be filming and working. And it was really hard. It was really hard because 
I think my body was like, okay, you're done. I'm like, I can't walk as far as I normally can walk. I mean, normally I do like between like 10 and 20,000 steps in a day is like my general average. And like, I would try to just like do a short, like maybe mile and a half walk I like to do, maybe two mile walk. And I got to a point and I just like turned around and went home and took a nap. <laughs> so thankfully that didn't last as long as they can. Um, I'm looking tan. Oh, I think I'm hot, so I'm flushed. Um, <laughs> I definitely do. My freckles have definitely popped. Um, and I do tan a little bit, but yeah, when I'm warm, then I flush. So it's hard to know, like, am I sunburnt? And then in the morning, it's like, oh no, I was just hot, and so I flushed. But tangent, new idea. Rebecca singing? Oh dear lord, no. <laughs> I, I feel like I need to issue a major apology every time I start to sing on stream. Um, I do not know how to use my voice well. And so, yes, I cannot really sing. <laughs> I am not the musical one. Um, I'm not the musical one at all. But oof, I'm enjoying, like, I feel like what's fun is some of the mintiness is sort of showing through. Oh, no. Uh, here we go. So many buttons just to zoom. You know, this camera used to zoom in so much more. But yeah, you can feel a lot. So the chocolate brown is the color that's on the bottom right there. And on camera and in person, it definitely is reading, like you can feel that warmth, that little bit more of like a melted chocolate kind of vibe. And so I think I like it. What you don't see on camera is just how bright that spearmint breeze is. Um, but I think that at like a lower depth of shade, it could work totally fine. Um, let me zoom you. Oh, if I do cancel, like, yeah, it went back. Ooh, I found a hack. Now, if I were, there was a question I guess in chat before we started about if I'm using my new camera and I have a new DSLR but I don't stream on it because since I'm streaming from my laptop and sitting on the floor um, to stream from the DSLR I would need to get a I, would, I wouldn't be able to run it off of the battery I would need to plug it into the wall and then I'd need to get some kind of capture card to attach the camera to to the computer and so I think all of that requires a lot more plugs and kinds of things than I really have space for over here. If we someday get me to a nice studio kind of setup, then when I'm planning that out, I would plan a dedicated desk and potentially um, like maybe even a desktop computer that could be like more stationary so I could have a permanent streaming setup, something that I would love. You were just starting to get better from your chronic fatigue at the beginning of 2020, the anxiety hit, yeah. Um, so for those of you that are new at all, I have chronic fatigue syndrome and I've been dealing with that for like over a decade. And yeah, so thankfully from the other illness that I just had, um, I'm not seeing, besides just general recovery from having been ill that I go through, which takes tends to take me a while, like, Otherwise, I seem to be okay, which I'm very happy about. Um, I'm going to check the timer. Oh, yeah. oh, I didn't even set a timer. Whoops. So Keith is all wanting to get our talk to architects and stuff. I'm not ready. I'm the one, like, holding back still because... Yeah, so I don't know if we'd move or what. I really like this. Like, a lot. Hmm. All right, let me get the yarn mop out. Okay, so that is cooling off. And now I'm going to put everything all back on. And I cannot see the chat. <laughs> okay, but now I'm going to see if I'm satisfied with the coverage or if we need 
a little more. And maybe we need like a little bit more. Sort of like in there. But otherwise, the coverage is really good. Oh, that's hot. Yarn mop is still hot. Note to self. Okay, so this time, I'm going to do some spearmint breeze. Focusing just like a bit in some areas that feel like they need or maybe missed out on some color. So that's really not bad. And actually, I may just leave it there. Okay, yarn mop is going to need to cool before I wipe up the counter. But these guys, oh, and I see like one spot that maybe could use a little bit. Well, we'll look at it in the end. The thing is, you can always add more color. But you cannot take any away. Okay, this is really warm still. So I don't know if it's going to melt this at all. Hopefully now. And this is when we're doing some literal, literal mopping. This one feels like it's melted ice cream. Maybe that's what its name will be. Okay, and then this is going to go in the other steamer basket, I think, for just 10 minutes. Help some of those colors start to set, and I'll clean this up and then come and talk about some happier things. Um... Okay, the counter is going to need more cleaning for sure. But I'm debating how to proceed with our colors. So after the 10 minutes, I'll take the yarn mop out of the steamer basket so it can cool. And then the um, other yarn will be in there for a total of 30 minutes. But I'm thinking I may do the chocolate chips first and then if necessary do the mint do the mint later. Which feels a little bit weird and I don't necessarily And I don't necessarily want to do the mint later, but if I was going to do the mint as a separate step and just include that in the recap, because I like that green, what I would do first is look at a few depths of shade of the spearmint breeze on some mini skeins. And I would do that first before deciding what color to add on to the chocolate chips speckles that I might do now. 
And this is mainly me trying to consider when my kids will get really fed up and then be like, can we come downstairs? <laughs> and so I'm thinking like, ooh, what would be the easiest to do? And so we'll go as far as we can. I just don't know how patient my children will be. More green. Yes, the, the other ones will definitely have somewhere in between. There's a fair amount of green in there. It's just each green bit is like deeper than the like softness on the ice cream. So yeah, that is what I have to debate. <laughs> that's my question. And I would be coming up here, but that's not as exciting. Um, yeah, so what else has been going on? Um, I've started filming on the new DSLR. Actually, the Dipop PS video that I mentioned, that's the first one video I think I will have filmed entirely on the new camera versus just filming like part of the conclusions or talking heads on it. I have not yet started filming in 4K. The new camera will allow me to film in 4K, but I guess I'm waiting until I have things, most of the things I'm working on, I'm starting on like fresh, maybe. Yeah, because also my editing software updated. And so it's sort of like, <laughs> like Premiere Pro, Adobe, come on. It updated and made some changes that are minor, but I'm still like getting my sea legs back there <laughs> as well. Can I dry, bribe the children with popcorn and films? Yes. Um, in fact, the bribe that we did today was that, so I don't know if any of you play Pokemon Go, but there's a community, community day today, like a special three hour kind of thing with like special rewards and whatnot. And I thought it was yesterday. So I was going to go do that with Lucas for a few hours because we'll use like my phone as like a hotspot and he'll play on his iPad and I'll play on my phone and it's a jolly good time. Well, Keith is out of town for work and it's today, not yesterday. So Ryder had to be with us and Ryder brought one short book and then was very bored. So Ryder's bribe for mostly behaving very, very well while Lucas was playing Pokemon Go out in like the center of our town um, where there's a lot of stuff to do. Uh, Ryder will get popcorn and we'll show them, the, I'm gonna show them the new Jurassic World movie, which I'm very excited about. So Keith and I saw Jurassic World Dominion in theaters opening weekend. We saw it that opening weekend. Um, it was awesome. I. I don't know where it fits in like my ranking of the movies, but I am satisfied with it as a conclusion of the new trilogy. So, and I enjoyed all the like throwback references and stuff. I enjoyed it, found it very enjoyable, which ultimately, if you've seen Jurassic Park 3, it's better than Jurassic Park 3. <laughs> I am such a big kid. Um, and so for Mother's Day this year, we showed the kids the original like Jurassic Park and stuff, and they've been very into it. Um, yeah, well, while I was sick, Ryder and I have watched most of Camp Cretaceous, which is real good, really good. Um, but yeah, so that's now available for like renting at home. And so the thing that has me torn is I could buy the digital version now and own it or I can wait and get the Blu-ray that'll have all the behind the scenes stuff that I like. Because I don't know if any of you are as into Jurassic Park as I am, but the behind the scenes stuff that talks about the effects and the real world effects in addition to the digital stuff that they do on all these movies, those like DVD extras are as good, like they're really, really good and entertaining. Not all DVD extras are entertaining. These ones are really great for a huge fan. Um, and so I really want that for this movie as well. Um, because looking at it, you're like, okay, I can kind of guess like where some of the practical effects um, take place because of just, you, I, I've seen all the other like things. And so I'm like, okay, yep, yeah, I know like where like these things come in, but it's just, it's really, really cool. Um, Yeah, and so that's the reason. So I'm like, okay, normally I would want to like try to balance things. Like we have a, a, a rule in the family that if we're going to rent a like rent a movie twice, 
then that probably means that we should just buy it because if we are wanting to watch it a second time, then we will probably end up wanting to watch it a third time. Um, so, yeah. But anyway, I'm excited about this um, this movie and my all-time like favorite character, Dr. Sattler, is in it. Um, and so, yeah, she was like my little I uh, she was my idol as a kid. Um, and so, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, I mean the book isn't the reason why I went into science or anything, but uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I cannot see how much time is on the timer, but so yeah, that is the, the bribe that they have, but still there is going to be a reckoning at some point. So I think the plan of speckling the yarn and get that setting and then determine yeah, because I think that doing the kettle dyeing, that's something that would be like really short to show in the recap, whereas like the speckles were more time. So um, I know I haven't shown them all the extras yet. I mean, they both are into the movies, but Ryder is much more of a movie buff than Lucas. We just took them to see um, the new Thor movie, which, you know, it's still hard showing them movies like that in theater sometimes because they get a little stressed out um at times but then you know and then there's always a point in the middle where they're like why did you why are we watching this it's the worst movie ever and then by the end they're thrilled um and so that was fun but i don't know i i like movie times also i knit during movies often but this one today i will probably have a child or two on my lap <laughs> So yeah, I, I'm very excited. Um, but yeah, I'm getting back into the swing of everything. Oh, I know what I wanted to do. Mm. Oh dear. I'm gonna need to copy some things over. There. Hello, you can see me now. <laughs> um, and let's do. Nope. There. Okay. And then I need to do the window capture. Uh, okay. I have updated my shop and added new inventory and things like that, which is exciting. Um, oh dear. I need to move me over more. So my shop is just Chemnitz Creations on Etsy. I feel like, oh, where's the banner? That's the name of my shop. I am going to pop it in the chat. All right, I'm gonna also then go pop the yarn mop out and I'll be right back. I know I can tune out the timer for a very long time, but not everyone else wants to listen to that beep. Oh, hot. The lid was hot. Okay. Ooh, the pistachio is looking great. I'm wondering if the spearmint breeze yarn I have is still. I think that's sold. Well, let me see. Search for green. Why can I not search? That may have some spearmint breeze in it. Maybe. Okay. But yeah, you can search for like Chemnitz Dialogue and that'll come up, but this is pistachio. So I have a group picture now. That is a weird zoom. But yeah, this is pistachio green, which like if you compare this, oh, I'm not even on camera. Which, looking at it, I believe this is a 1% depth of shade. Like, looking at that, 
Yeah, looking at that, that could be pretty good for a mint. Let me grab. Still maybe not quite blue enough, but you can see why I pulled it. Like there's something there that you could think of as mint ice cream, but I don't think it's the right one. Um, not at all. Now, this yarn, which video were you from? Overdizing glazed yarn. Yes, I think that this, there's some other things. I think there's bright aqua, and I think the green could have been spearmint breeze. So there are elements in here. Um, actually, if I just select that one, there, are, where is my... There are elements in there, if you sort of ignore the bluer parts, that could give us something a little bit more here. Now, part of the fun um, that I'm having now, like thinking about all of this, is using mint and chocolate dyes to create this mint chocolate chip ice cream. There's something fun about that, and I enjoy that. And so that's why I'm going for that color. In theory, the spearmint breeze is maybe a little bit too blue. Pistachio is a little bit too yellow. If I were to mix them together, maybe we would end up something closer to this picture. But I still think I'm going to create something that it's going to feel like an artificial mint ice cream flavor. Yeah, then the pistachio one. Yeah. Ooh, I haven't seen the Lion Witch in the Wardrobe movie. Um, but that's actually another, that's a book series that I've been meaning to get from the library from Lucas. I think he would enjoy it. Um, for those of you that don't know, my eldest is eight and a half and my youngest is six and a half. And the and a halves are very important to these children. And it's about time for me to stand back up. I could talk for a long time, but I realized, um, yep, Judy, exactly, exactly. I realized that one of my problems no oh i wanted to do the die along this week but they don't have camp this week and with keith out of town like i would be in the same position every day so all right we need to set a timer because i am full of planning correctly for 20 minutes for our, it's more like, the first one's more like a chocolate and mint chip. Um, this is our yarn mop, which is looking very, very chocolatey and wonderful. And actually, you can go in there where there's probably still some dye. So this is not yet set completely, but by setting this for a couple minutes at a time every once in a while, what that does is allow me to use it more and as a yarn mop more and more and more and more and more. And so we will continue to do so. Um, but I need to get our yarn. Um, and we're going to make some chocolate chips. So previously we've used stroll. This is a bit more stroll. Um, in theory, you could think of a fun fake set where you have chocolate chip ice cream and mint ice cream and like playing with all of it could be totally fun. Will three skeins fit in the small one? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, but I think on this, we're going to go for the chocolate brown and sort of see where we end up. But while we wait, ha, I messed up. Where did I mess up? <laughs> Mm 
one of these is not like the other. One of these is DK. <laughs> And one of these is fingering weight. Now I'll come back and check the chat before we carry on. There we go. I can probably fit three skeins in there. I hope. But yeah, we'll chocolate chip it up. Which, like, I don't need it to be, like, super heavy, as heavy as we did on the last ones, but we'll see. Chocolate mop. Yep, it's a chocolate mop. And I think I need to brighten this again. I feel like the day keeps getting a little bit, um, hazier. Hmm. Lighten up a little bit. Yarn mop is, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. So one green that like emerald, which maybe isn't quite the right green to be the leaf of mint. Um, that would be something that could be really, really fun to do. Um, and to play with another green. What I have learned from experience though is that specifically like emerald green does not speckle very well um it does okay with immersion style speckles but overall it is um it takes a longer time to bind and so learning the hard way when i'm like speckling with it on the countertop and instead of getting like big juicy speckles it ended up giving me like splotch city and i didn't understand why at the time. That was a few years ago, though. Not to say that we don't have Splotch City over here. There's some areas where some of the browns definitely splotched out on us. But we'll see. We'll see where we end up. For now that I know more of what I want, um, I am going to just go for it and flip and kind of do it and then go straight into the set. I'm not going to wait in between. So we've got our chocolate brown and it's not mixed with any citric acid, which is only an issue if I make it an issue. Uh, it just means that I need to be extra careful if I don't want all of it to run together. And again, I have these skeins sort of scrunched versus laid out perfectly flat. And the reason for that is some of the powder will go down a few layers, potentially. And sometimes with some intent. Okay. We've got Moppity here. I didn't put on a lid onto the container, which is one of my big cardinal sins. I don't like leaving open containers of dye around. And so as I flip, some of this may spread. This is one of the issues with using a dye I am less familiar with because I don't really know how well it speckles. So it may not give us sharp speckles, but also that's okay because super sharp, like period sized speckles don't often, 
um, necessarily read as thickly as like tiny splotches of color where you can see it more on the pattern. And you know I'm focusing when you don't really hear me talking anymore. I'm going to be a good girl this time. This is going to turn into chocolate, mint chocolate ice cream. It's going to have so much brown in it. So let's see. And again, I'm not worried about large patches of brown, or brown. <laughs> I'm not worried about large patches of white. Exactly. I mean, we're pretty close to what I wanted. I just need a little bit more. You know, I made cookies recently, and the recipe had you wanted you to add as much chocolate as there was flour. And I thought that was a little ridiculous. Don't get me wrong, I love chocolate, but the proportions just felt odd. Okay. That I'm liking. But I think what I want to do now, besides like, I'll just die off my fingers and then go start steam setting our chocolate chips, is wait. Hmm. Oh, that I don't know. That I don't know. Let me get this in the steamer basket. Ooh. Seems fit. Okay, there are 10 minutes on the steamer, on the timer. I will need to add 20. Actually, I technically don't, but I will. So the reason why I don't need to leave 20 minutes on the timer uh, for this round is because we're going to over dye our chocolate chip yarn, it doesn't matter. Um, because the point is to over dye it, it does not matter if it um, gets like the full amount of time. But let me wipe this down and then I'll come back. Da -da -da -da. Okay. Oh, I know what I got there. Okay, I'm gonna wash hands. I'm gonna turn down the heat on one and up the heat on the other. And then I'm going to sit down and talk to you because that is what I would like to do. Okay. Hey, chocolate chip cookies, you measure the chocolate with your heart. No, so I'm making them with like, I mean, she's basically my niece. Um, and we're looking at the recipe and it's like, you know, two and a quarter cups of flour. All right, that's all going great. And then it's like two and a half cups of chocolate. 
And I'm just like, I don't know about that, especially because it was, ended up being such of this crumbly dough that you had to form. I don't know how well it would have worked with a lot more chocolate. They were delicious as they were. Uh, but that was, I was like, the ratio just felt so off. Um, splotches are absolutely perfect for chocolate chips. Exactly. Could do a light mint green and then other colors of sprinkles. But ooh. Oh, we also added multicolored sprinkles to them, which was fun. Oh, okay. So any of you that live in the Massachusetts area, have you ever heard of Cookie Monster? I got a... I gotta like shout this place out hardcore because now granted I don't know much about the company or anything um, but they make fresh cookies and you can get an ice cream cookie sandwich with you can have two flavors of cookies and whatever flavor of ice cream they have in the middle and I got yeah look at that so that is their um, mint Oreo which I like just as much as mint chocolate chip in that like mint Oreo flavor, but I got sea salt caramel cookies on either side and it was so good. They started as like a food truck and now they have like a, a physical location like in the next town. Um, so if you ever see, is that, is that an image? No. If you ever see the cookie monster food truck, highly, highly enjoyed. Highly enjoyed. <laughs> um, and like the amount of like it, this cookie sandwiches are big and each one was $7, which on one hand is expensive, but like JP Licks getting like an ice cream cone, I feel like is approaching that anyway. And this was like huge, like not even, none of the adults could finish one. Um, and so like, yeah, it was, it was very, very exciting. So if you ever see the food, the, their food truck, um, which will often be at like events, um, like downtown, but yeah, I was like, oh, I now know what I want for everything else. But yeah, I've been dreaming of those cookies. <laughs> and I'm like the kid just after the like fourth attempt finally finished theirs from like two weeks ago last night and I'm like well gee they finished it does that mean we need to go get more <laughs> it's like mama's in charge what are we gonna do this week but actually I'll probably send the kids one at a time to my parents for an overnight or something so that'll that'll be fun um Ryder may want to film something we maybe we'll do some tie-dyeing I don't know I don't even know but I'm getting back in the swing of things <laughs> um yeah, but okay, I kind of wanted to wait a little bit to see what I can see from this one pot before I start speckling um, on the DK, just so that way I know if I need to modify it at all. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I think the, the big thing that my kids probably want, and this is, I don't know, I think that like as a parent, the last few years have been hard, but like my kids are old enough that it wasn't so hard. Like I feel it was harder for parents of, like I had friends who had their first kid ever, like in in summer of 2020. That had to have been really hard. Um, and people with toddlers, like that had to have been super hard. But my kids were old enough that like they could understand a lot. I don't know how well they understand, but it could have been harder. It was hard, could have been harder. I could envision the harder. But they're entering the stage now where like they're starting to enjoy my favorite things. Like I talked about Jurassic Park, like Lucas plays Pokemon Go with me. Um, and like they both love sushi now. Or at least Matthew. But like we haven't I haven't let them try like raw fish yet. I don't know how they'd really feel about that, but like as I mentioned, like, hey, we're gonna get some sushi. Ryder's like eyes like get so big, and he's like yes and it's like his favorite and that just makes me so happy so happy and yeah it's just it's really cool the extent to which they're enjoying things that we genuinely love for ourselves 
And so that has been really nice about this stage. Of course, my elder child is also like, I feel like tweendom is approaching because like, sometimes he's just like, doesn't get that excited about a lot of stuff until then he gets very excited. <laughs> and it's just like, well, whatever. But I don't know. I'm enjoying them a lot, even if I'm like, I mean, I think Heath left at five or his flight left at five this morning. And so I'm like, I'm like, oh, this is fine. But the number of times I haven't been. Yeah, he's been home. <laughs> but I don't know. I'm not making any sense. I've missed you guys. I've missed streaming. Part of me really wanted to try to stream on Friday, but I also didn't want to push myself too hard. So I was like, you know, it's my first day back filming. Let's not overdo it. But hopefully, so this next week, there's no camp. But then the next couple of weeks, there is camp. And so I'm hoping to bring some like streaming in and just have some fun and dye some yarn and restock the shop. And yeah, and I'm starting to go from, I still have to inventory the yarn and place the new order, but Hanukkah's around the corner. And so I will be starting to die for that really soon, which feels wild. Um, it feels very, very wild because I'm already there. And I haven't yet decided if I'm going to have a loose theme this year. Because like last year, I did like each night, I, for the first night I had one color, and then the eighth night I used eight colors. And so that was like a fun little thing. Um, the year before I did sort of like a saturation thing, things started off really pastel and by the end they were mega saturated. The year before that, I had like a very loose out of order rainbow theme where like there was a primary hue that was the main color each night. I don't know if there's going to be a theme. I almost... Part of me is almost like, ooh, I have an idea that like I could do, but I don't know if I will do. So I don't know if that makes sense. It might just be more, more random. Like these are a few of my favorite things, <laughs> kind of thing. Um, but I definitely have like a list of ideas of techniques and stuff to do for it. I just need to make the decision and order things but pre-orders for that will be coming for a while so if you um if you follow me on patreon even if you don't um who's with it? even if you aren't don't want to sign up to become a patron um you can follow and I'll drop the link in the chat. You can follow for free. Um, and so then like when pre-orders go live, there will be a public post. And so that's the closest thing I have to an email list. But also once, um, once the listings are up, I will also be like announcing it all over social media. So there's that as well. All right. I'm like trying to get a close look. I think there's a row. No. Oh, because I didn't move it. Yeah, I think I like the reddish brown color. The speckles aren't the sharpest, but for chocolate chips, that's okay. Um, the Spearmint Breeze speckles are a little better, and the Pistachio speckles are pretty good, but are nearly invisible. Not that you guys can see very well, but this is the, the first round, which I really like. I like that a lot. And I think that that will go really well with both our chocolatey one that we've got here and the one that is happening or chocolate chips, which some of those look kind of speckly. So I'll sit down for a couple more minutes. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in chat. Oh, but you know what else I need to do this week, guys? 
I need to do, oh, I still have cookie monster, that's scary. Oh no! Oh no, okay, phew. I didn't lose it, I, everything's good. Um, you know what I still need to do? I still, I have a bunch of unboxings. So I have knit crates from last month, which I didn't do because you know, we were sick and then we had company and so, yeah. Um, I have one of the July knit crates has arrived already, which is awesome. And I have my Paradise Fibers, so there'll be an unboxing at some point. Um, Judy, that is a fun one. I could always have a more symbolic theme rather than a literal one. Oh, completely, completely. And I know that, like, um, if there's not, I know there also doesn't need to be an overarching theme. I don't want to, like, put too much pressure on myself for it. Because, like, I have some ideas of colorways I want to do. I just, like... I, I want, I like it when they're fun and the next night isn't too obvious. I like it when sometimes people ha can guess what they think might be next or guess a color, but I like there to be like, I don't want it to be too predictable um, because I want there to be some like, ooh, like what's this or how is this made? Um, am I going to do a Halloween colorway? I would like to. I would really like to. Um, my goal would be to film. Mm. So at one point in January, I made a plan for the whole year. I'm like, this is when I'm going to dye things. And I think that meant that I should be dying Halloween like now. Uh, but I guess also the thing I was going to do for Halloween last year, I sort of did as the bonus colorway for the spring mini skin mini series um so i need a new idea but i would like to do a halloween colorway i'm hoping to do a halloween colorway um i just yeah i, I haven't yet the other complicating factor that is a little bit of a stressor is that i have jury duty i got called for jury duty in august but i did delay it until like mid-september but I'm stressed because if I get put on like a long trial or something, that would be a little bit stressful. So yeah, I mean, at one point there was like a end of summer of like mini, mini series I wanted to do. And yeah, like <sighs> I have, the nice thing is I'm not short of ideas. I just have to decide what I'm gonna do. But the thing I would have done for like a mini thing, I may just do that next spring or summer for the next SMSMS that I do um, and have that be like the theme. The colors will be fun and stuff. It's just the theme may not be as like relatable to everyone. You know what? And that's fine. That's fine. Um, but yeah. All okay. right. I want to go peek at my chocolate chips and see what I think. Oh, and I should put a lid back on here. Oh, it's so hot. Okay. Set about half of the time. Oh yeah, that's looking good to me. The colorway is a little bit pink, but you know what? With green on there, I think it'll be okay. Watch me when this is all over regret the color that I used. All right, but here's the question. Hmm, because I could do a different brand. No, I'm gonna do the same one. I almost was gonna do a pull, change my mind. We're gonna do, we're gonna do the same one. Um, yes. Whew. But yeah, I feel like it's been like a really long time since I've streamed. Okay, I'm gonna remove some water liquid. my hand that's dripping not the yarn the nice thing with dk yarn is that it goes a little bit faster because there's less there's fewer strands so it's almost like you need fewer speckles at least that's kind of how it feels but yeah so then what i will do ten, probably tonight 
and not on stream. And I don't know for sure if I'll do mini skeins or not. I might just make a die stock and start at a really low depth of shade and then slowly build it up more and more and more to get the color that I want on the yarn. But hilariously, some of my favorite mint chocolate chip ice cream isn't green at all. It's funny how loving to use food coloring to dye yarn means that I don't like eating food coloring as much anymore. Is that weird? Is that just me? <laughs> a baller, oh, let me see. Um, you've been trying to make a pastel pale pink and it's the hardest color to make. Uh, lavender, have you tried, yeah, ballerino, ballerina pink can work well. Flamingo pink is a gorgeous pale pink. Um, Valentine blush is another one that I really like, all from Dharma. I would say that when it comes to making a nice pastel pink, I think it's easier to start with a pink than it is to start with a red because those colors that are more mixed with a pastel pink in mind sometimes can be quite bright, but like when they're more pastel, you feel the like baby pink versus sometimes when you start with a red and make it really light, you feel like a more watered down, like watermelon color versus like a pink, if that makes sense. Um, uh, yes. Um, and when you're dealing with something super pastel, uh, it can be hard to get like even coverage for the color, those colors, because there's so little pigment overall, I would use a really large volume of water, no acid, start cold to add the yarn in, but also dye it in multiple layers. So use like a quarter of the amount of dye you want total. Start with that, add the yarn in, um, and then do multiple layers like that. I have a version, a video I did with that with Navy where I use like, you know, a milliliter of dye at a time on three different skeins. And eventually I got a very like good coverage pastel color and that worked really well. All right, chocolate chip. Why am I hungry now? Hmm. I do have to think about what I want for dinner. Ugh. Oh, maybe I want Vietnamese food. Mm. I found a really good place that makes really good sauce. All right. See, I don't know if the kids would like this. Um, they might, but, okay. And so this time, as I'm going across, I'm trying to keep, because I know there's going to be spread, I'm trying to keep these lines that I'm making relatively thin. So I'm going more, like, in the line across the fibers, instead of going, sometimes I go a bit wider when I'm speckling. Now, sometimes when I do this, I try to go at like angles, so that way it doesn't end up being, or feeling too repeating. But what I'm doing today is I'm doing some lines, and then I'm gonna do some like more random placement, but especially since we have it um, bunched up, that will add some randomness to it. At least it should. And I'm still going to need to steam set this mop all over again. And I'll use this when I deal with the green. That just might be post bedtime. I do have some mini skeins I can pre-soak, so maybe I will do that. 
Got a nice little set out of this as well. Oh man, but I am dreaming of having like studio space where like I can have things set up. Whether it be like, it would probably be like building out the garage. Or maybe we had like a basement or something we could renovate. Actually, I was talking with one of my friends and he's like, you should get an RV and make a mobile dye studio. Which like on one hand, I think that that sounds awesome. <laughs> on the other hand, like I would never drive it anywhere. And parking space is not something we have a lot of. Because in the winter, we can't park on the street here. Which is unfortunate. It'd be nice if we could park. Okay. Trying to like, you know, like, where are under layers? Let's hit down there. Like, how much chocolate do we want? Oh, I like chocolate. Okay, so mint chocolate chip is my favorite ice cream flavor. So what's my favorite milkshake flavor? <clears throat> or frap, if you're my grandmother. Does anyone else say frap? Or was that just my grandma who grew up in Massachusetts? In like the, I guess she grew up in like the 40s. She's no longer walking this earth, but uh, I feel like even my grandfather doesn't say frap. So, <laughs> oh man. So it's good, so good in it, some friend right there. Well, see, okay, I don't know. Oh, Breaking Bad, like the mobile van. Because I was like, so like Breaking Bad. I don't know if I want to be compared to Breaking Bad. <laughs> I mean, if it's saying that I'm a hit success here on YouTube with a ton of people watching, that would be cool. <laughs> but I'm not doing anything illegal. <laughs> no, I we watched a little bit of Breaking Bad and then... It kind of, I don't know if it's that it jumped the shark for us. I guess it kind of did, because then we just kind of stopped. But we did enjoy it for a while. We do need a new TV show. There's a lot of shows that, like, we watched part of and then never finished and stuff. So, yeah, there's a lot that's, like, on the list. Like, we haven't seen the last, like, few seasons of Game of Thrones. So we've read the book. We read the books first. Uh, and then when I was pregnant, we stopped watching. <laughs> And that was ages ago. Oh, and then when we wanted to rewatch, we didn't have HBO. So, which of course now we do, so we could rewatch that. Okay, that's gonna need like another 30 minutes on the timer. Um, what other shows? Love the Good Place. But that ended. That one we finished. Um, I always enjoyed like The Office. Yeah, we like a lot of, like, comedy stuff, but Camp Cretaceous I've enjoyed, so that's not exactly comedy, that's an animated series. 
Um, I like a lot of the Disney Plus shows. WandaVision was a favorite of mine. But yeah, you definitely always need new shows. Okay. Yay! Okay, we've got like one finished colorway, some others in progress. <laughs> But I know what I'm going to need to do, and that's figure out how much mint we need. Uh, I will need to spray this when I'm done. There's some staining. I'll probably stain it with some Lysol or something. And wipe it down again. And then I also like to wipe down the floors. Um, especially whew, before the kids come back down. But I can come show you the first colorway that we did that is done. Not that I want to put it on the counter. But I actually, oh no, where's the, there we go. I really like it. I like all the different browns and the green speckles. It feels like so good. I'm so happy with that. Um, and I think that that will pair with this other colorway in a really, really delightful way. So I'm very excited about that. Let's see. The Good Place. Um, zombie, I Zombie is a good comedy. Not for kids yet. Lucifer. Squid Games. Yes, that's on my list. Um, the reason why we haven't watched it yet is that um, I needed to not be working on something because... I heard that it's like you get more out of it if you watch it with subtitles versus watching a dubbed version. And so I just want to make sure that, like, I'll read. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's absolutely on the list. But yeah, the other issue, <laughs> the bigger issue is lately... Keith and I like to have shows that we watch together, but lately I've been, and by lately I mean like the last like year, I've been so tired that I'm not staying up late. So he's been watching, he's watched like The Expanse and like a lot of other stuff without me. All right, I'll have to show the chocolate chips to you guys in a moment. I'm gonna let it cool a tiny bit. The yarn mop is going in. You can go there. You can go there. We'll set the camera for 30 minutes. Oh dear. Yes, you need cleaning. was a camp day and then I would be able to if today was camp then I would have been able to carry on uh, and keep going the dubbed one is good okay um, I forget who recommended the, the non dubbed one um, but yeah I was like okay if I'm gonna read subtitles I need to be like present but a lot of times I go to bed at like 8 that's also why I do these streams now in the middle of the day versus at night, because I'm more mentally present. But I know this isn't as long as a lot of like dialogue streams, like not even two hours. I'm like, oh, it feels so short. But I'll be honest, I am. Uh, my stamina is not back 
to where it normally is. And so that's something that I know will come back, or hopefully will come back. Um, but I'm used to having like ups and downs with like have living through CFS and stuff. So I know that I need to like just regain my balance and my spoons will level out. Oh, thanks for joining the Patreon. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so the, oh yeah, there's lots of ways to help support Chemnitz. Um, in my description of here, there are like affiliate links and stuff. Nitpicks is still having like their summer yarn sale and a lot of their yarn is on sale. Um, and there's my Etsy shop. Uh, links to all of that is in the description. But, um, oh, I want to show the chocolate chip before I go and do my end spiel. But yeah, so this brown, it's actually, a, it wasn't that brown, but the color that I have on the background of the text is the chocolate color I picked from there. So like really I could have used black, but I didn't want to use black, you know? Oh, I am, I am. Um, there, there were days when I was like, I'm not going to push too hard. Um, yeah, take care of your spoons. Take care of your spoons. There's always, yeah, the streams always end up as being videos on demand. Vods, so you can watch it later and enjoy when, yeah, when you're full of spoons. Um, but let me get the chocolate chip yarn. And things move around. So yeah, there are like stream things where instead of me like doing the individual settings, you can have like buttons toggled that will hop between the scene changes you want. And that is something that at some point maybe we'll have. I don't know where I'm on screen, but this is looking very chocolate chippy to me and I am happy. There's some spots where it's a little bit more like big and blended. But that's also okay. Actually, there was a place, was it like Andy's Custard in Evanston, Illinois? Mm, let me see. I think this is the place. Uh, full menu. Yeah. Okay. The game of ice cream. All right. So it's in, in Illinois, Andy's Frozen Custard, the mint chip concrete. Like they put like chocolate around the bottom and they use like melted chocolate chips that got blended in. So the chocolate chips, because they went into it when they were melted, ended up having these like thin, but they were smaller than a chip. They were more like a flake because they sort of solidified, but then got blended in with like the mint and whatever the, um, the custard was. But that is something that I miss. There, if you know, I mean, I don't think, I wonder, um, I'm like, are there any Massachusetts? No, I'm not going to share my location. No! <laughs> but yeah, there was one. Uh, as I'm like not being good on camera. But anyway, that's another mint chocolate chip highlight. And of course, like there's thin mints. I, I like mint and chocolate. <laughs> Coming out of luck to say Andy's Frozen Custard is the best. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't know until just now when I looked it up um, how much of a chain it was, but it was walkable for us. And oh man, like as much as I love Massachusetts, like there was a really good um, Chinese restaurant that had so much, they had so many boba flavors. Um, oh, it was so good. There were, there were just so much in downtown Evanston. It was so walkable. We lived so close to everything. I miss that. Um, so many places that like we just really really like loved to eat and I feel like Yeah, we're like ooh discovering things all over again because my kids won't eat things that are no 
well, they, they'll love things that are dinosaur shaped, but they won't only eat things that are dinosaur shaped. Um, but anyway, thank you so much for joining me for this like low key stream. I feel like I'm getting back on like my feet, getting back to work. <laughs> um, I did have, thankfully with the timing of everything that happened, I had planned to take this like month, like mid June to mid July off anyway. So I had like videos all ready to go. And so that was all, yeah, that meant that I could take it easy when I needed to take it easy. And so that was good. Um, yeah, oh, you miss Andy's. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, wow. Okay, it's grown over the past 10 years. Yeah, I guess I haven't lived in Illinois for, oh no, Lucas was born there. So we moved back here. Oh, I don't remember. 2015 maybe? So I've been back here for seven years. Yeah, that sounds about right. Seven years. Uh, I mean, I've lived in Massachusetts more than anywhere else. But yeah, Andy's was, was real nice. Um, and I mean, they were massive. That was the only problem. But anyway, yeah, thank you for letting me have this low key stream where like, it's funny cause I was like, Ooh, I know exactly what to do what I want to do. I just didn't quite get all the way there. Even though I love the like first kind of like playing with all the browns and greens. I love how that turned out. I know that this, even though the brown is more brown than what we have in the inspiration photo, that's what I wanted because I didn't want it to just feel like little bits of black. I wanted to feel chocolate and like evoke that, Hunger is what I wanted. I wanted to be hungry. Um, and I can't believe that I planned an ice cream theme stream for National Ice Cream Day. And that was completely unplanned. Um, and so, yeah, that was fun. But now I'm like, oh, we need ice cream. <laughs> oh, but yeah, we'll probably instead have like popcorn when we go watch our movie. But yeah. Thank you so much for joining. And if you would like to be featured in the recap, so I still have more work to do. I want to layer on the mint color onto our yarn. And so I will show that process and then what the finished dry yarn looks like in a recap that will come out in mid August, um, a recap of the stream. And so in that, I will also feature a lot of your yarn that you dyed inspired by either this mint chocolate chip photo or your favorite flavor of ice cream. If you pick another flavor of ice cream, um, just grab a picture to share like on Instagram or Facebook along with it or share the flavor. Um, it'll be fun to see like what inspires you. And yeah, um, although I feel like mint chocolate chip is, a lot of people like that one. It's the, when you get controversial, it's the best flavor. <laughs> no, but, yeah, I mean, I don't mind if you pick other ice cream as well. And so, yeah, just let me know. Because sometimes when I'm going, especially on Instagram, when I'm going and looking through, I'm like, oh, okay, those were clearly last month's pictures <laughs> or whatever. And so if someone does like Superman ice cream or something that's rainbow, I might be like, oh, is that for last month? And, and not realize. But anyway, thank you all so, so much for tuning in. Uh, subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any live streams. I hope to be live again in the next couple of days for sometime this week for the unboxing. And yeah, I'm excited. Um, I think that's about it. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Bye.